Welcome to Be The Wellness Podcast, where we help you master your body, mind, and the experience of life through insightful conversation, interviews with experts and thought leaders, all with a side of marital banter and some good old-fashioned humor. Yes, we are your hosts, Adam and Vanessa Lambert, and we're committed to helping you live life fully expressed physically, mentally, and experientially. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and join the conversation. Hello and welcome everybody to Be The Wellness Podcast. We're back. We're back. (laughs) Did you guys miss us? (laughs) Probably. I mean, we missed us. Yeah. (laughs) We've been gone for a minute. You know, I don't know how many weeks we've taken off, but I want to say it's about five or six at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So, which was completely unplanned, but to be honest, it was just kind of like, I don't know, sort of the stars aligned where we just didn't have any more guests booked for a minute and we were just pretty burnt out and it was kind of like, let's just not do that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take a break. <laughs> well, and it also lined up with our little stretch of, of van life and it around Dodge yeah. and Smoke in California. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was like, which is, a, it's like, looks more fun on Instagram. I don't know. You know. I had fun. It's, well, it, it, but it's cool, <laughs> except that, like the whole concept of like, let's work remotely from places that don't have good internet. Well, that's, you know yeah, what I mean? That's, really that's what where it comes you're down like, to. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All of this stuff on Instagram, these people on their laptops in Yosemite. It's like, no, no. that's not what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been quite a year. And I think that really the purpose of this podcast was like really to just share with you guys the journey of the last year and kind of get, get you up to speed and, where we are and just kind of what we've been through in the last year. It's been pretty crazy. Yeah. 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 Like the whole year or just since we've Oh yeah. We're going to give you a play by play. This is going to be a 17 hour podcast. (laughs) And then I got, I took a shower (laughs) and I put some lotion on. the first month of 2020 (laughs) when everything was normal. Volume one. Yeah. (laughs) Um, No, I mean, you know, it, it really does begin though last October, I guess, when we were, or last September, when we took our five week road trip after Burning Man um, to To our retreat out in Montana. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had just an awesome time. We had our blue steel RV, which is, you know, our RV that we purchased last year for Burning Man. But then turns out it ended up being like one of the best purchases we've made. (laughs) Yeah. A couple of years ago, we got it. I guess, yeah. I guess actually it was a few years ago now. but we took the RV out to uh, to Montana, and when we got back to LA, it just felt like literally like we couldn't fit back in our box. Yeah. You know, our small little studio that we've had for gosh, eight, ten years or whatever. Ten years, yeah. Um, you know, and we just really loved our beach life in Venice, and you know, it's different. You don't need a lot of space in LA because like you're outdoors a lot. You're mm-hmm. you're sort of just you know, enjoying the environment, but there was something about that trip and being out in nature and just almost like the expansiveness of that experience where we just couldn't go back into our little spot in Venice. It was like, literally I couldn't fit anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it's bigger than the RV. (laughs) Yeah. It still seems small. It seems small. Yeah. 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 So you know, that kind of began this whole little soul searching journey, which is kind of interesting because it's sort of just the stars aligned in a way for 2020 just to be a big jumbled mess because it right. was kind of <laughs> like everything just needed. It was like literally like your your phrase you love to say is like we needed the snow globe sh- really shaken shaking yeah. <laughs> and and kind of allowed to be, you know, to, to reinvent what our reality was going to look like moving forward. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, (laughs) and so that was the idea, right? We're like, all right, we're going to get out of Venice. We're going to be in Costa Rica, basically two weeks in November, two weeks in October. And then, uh, you know, we're off to Peru in March and then New Zealand in April. And that, you know what I mean? This is like just (laughs) our life is just so many things in a row. Right. Yeah. (laughs) And so we did Costa Rica, obviously in November, December, and then we landed in Northern California and we're like, okay, we'll be here for a month and we'll drop the dogs off with your mom. And then we're off. Yep. And then, no. And then the great halt of 2020 began. (laughs) Yeah. It's so crazy to think that that was like 
almost a year ago now. It's so you know? weird because on one hand, 2020 literally feels like the longest year of my life. And on the other hands, uh, on other hands, <laughs> and feet, on, whatever, what other extremities you want to use. On my blue hands. <laughs> <laughs> it, it feels like it's gone so quick. So it's it's like a yeah. real juxtaposition well, in the time so, warp. <laughs> so, okay. So here's how I think this goes down. Is that our brains, right? Like the way that we are... Um, the way that we sort of track time is it's relative to the length of time that we've been around. Right. right? So every year, a year feels shorter right. because in comparison to the number of years we've been around, it is shorter. Right. So there's that. And then there's also like the laying down of memories. Mm -hmm. Right. So that whole thing of like, why do years seem to go by faster and faster as you get older is like one because of the relative length and two, because you lay down fewer memories as you get older like yep. generally. And so I think in 2020, as compared to pretty much every other year, at least since we started like really doing stuff, I don't know, like for the, for the last 10 years, I guess. Yeah. We've been laying down a shitload of memories yeah. every year. You know, it's like think about all the retreats, all of the travel, all of the cool stuff that's just like bam, bam, bam. Right. Those were all memories. 2020, not only did it go by quickly because, you know, we weren't paying attention, right? Or because we're, I don't know, whatever, the relative length of the year. But then we didn't lay down that many memories. But do you, you know think that's I mean? actually true? Because like, I, so I feel like, so... Um, no, I, I don't think it's true. That's why I spent the last five minutes saying it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's interesting because on one hand, I agree with you. But the thing is, like, we started out the year and we were like, okay, we're just going to stay at my mom's in Northern California. She has this amazing house in on the lake. And we were just like, this is the perfect spot to hunker in during COVID. Let's just let this whole thing go by yeah. and we'll reemerge from, you know, from the ashes, so to speak, when this whole thing is done. And then, you know, she sold her house. Right. So we kind of got like jarred out of that plan and sort of like, oh, where do we go? And it was this really strange experience of for the first time, Time that I, in my life, I honestly did not know where to go. Like mm -hmm. I did not know where to make home. Like Ven Venice in LA was really weird. It yeah. was super Off the table. like not, you, we did not want to go back there. I mean, it was like COVID central and just awkward as fuck. <laughs> yeah. And, and so we decided to just really take our RV, take blue steel and just start, you know, doing so, like you said, some van life and kind of just journeying around and we spent a bunch of time in the redwoods. Yeah. That was in um, August for, for, was it? Yeah. Gosh, it feels like, I don't know. Yeah. Again, so this is, is, this, so is what, and this is what I'm saying. <laughs> like it's, it's a weird one because, uh, because the, you know, the time dilation of us, like normally understanding what a, a week and a month looks like is, is changing just because we're getting older, but yeah. like literally the things that would normally lay down tracks as to keep track of what the hell's going on in a year didn't yeah. occur this year. So everything's weird. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, yeah. I guess you're right. It's weird yeah. though. Cause like we went to Puerto Rico for a couple of weeks and then yeah. where else did we go? Well, all after, so, well, okay. So this is, so this is the, what I think is up, right? So like prior to like literally right before everything locked down, we were in park city. Yeah. Right. We were right, like, right, right. this was our normal life. Oh, yes. we got to fly over here and do this yeah. thing. And we got this thing going on. Right. And then everything locks down and, and we ride that thing all the way until August when your mom sold the house and we're like, okay, well actually now things are starting to loosen up a little bit. We can do some travel. We can do this kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. then it was bam, right yeah. back into, all right, we're off to Puerto Rico. And then you're from Puerto Rico, it was Florida. And then it yeah. was back to LA. And then, you yeah. know what I mean? And then yeah, we were right. like, okay, wait a second. There's fires everywhere in California. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like, we've got to just, you know, so it was like this, this huge pause between February, I guess. Yeah. And August, August. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's just like the, what I don't even know what the, happened in there. The, I mean, the only event that really in my mind happened was we lost Penelope and that yeah. basically Penelope takes died. up the whole space for me. Right. <laughs> and that was like, and that was in the end of July. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. there was this whole window in there that was like a, a blackout. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, knows? you're right. And then, so then I guess from there, we, we really just did a bunch of like traveling around in the RV. And that yeah. was like, we went to Tahoe a couple of times. Mm -hmm. We went Spent a couple of weeks in Yosemite, yep. a couple of weeks in the Redwoods, yep. a week on the coast. Yeah. Yeah. Was, so, yeah. We went to Guerneville for those of you who were with us at yeah. B-Fest. We spent some more time in Guerneville and it was like, 
super fun, but all with the intention that like one of these places was going to make us go, oh, okay, we should stay here. Or right. like, we should... Here's what we'll do next. Yeah, like, here's where <laughs> we'll go next. Or like, this makes sense. And it just didn't come. Yeah. We were like, dude. And so the, you know, the novelty of the van life was starting to wear off. And we were yeah. still like where the hell are we going? Well, yeah, what are we going to do? <laughs> like, where are we going to actually live? Summer's winding down. We're like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, we kind of need to like be somewhere for yeah, yeah, you don't the wanna, winter. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and it's so it's really bizarre because there were so many things that were like, okay, here's a good idea. And then it just couldn't materialize exactly. or things would just change. So, and you're like, oh man, that's not a good idea anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? like, yeah. And it was just like time after time after time. Very interesting experience. Like we're normally, you know, with us, it's like idea, decision, flow. Create. And it just yeah, happens. Exactly. You know, and we're like idea, no, idea, no, <laughs> no idea. No idea. You know what I mean? And like that's no the weird idea. part. You're yeah. just like, shit, man, I don't know. You know, like uh, this is, we'll figure it out. I'm sure it'll come along. Click, 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 click. Oh, it's the, the end of September. Click, <laughs> click, click. You know, we're like, exactly. now uh, we need to figure out what the hell we're doing. But, you know, I, I would have to say that one of the coolest things about this, this time, because, you know, in the end, like we all go through these times in our life where we're not super clear and things aren't, you know, we're kind of in the, the abyss of creation, right? You know, it's mm-hmm. like not, not all of our life is this like super clear point. Yeah. Sometimes right. the coordinates are being, you know, figured out. Yeah. And I think that like, it's just important that, you know, that we share this part of our journey with you guys, because I know that when, you know, you're looking at our Instagram or you're looking at our life, you just think, oh, like, oh, look at, they've got it all figured out. Yeah, got some people might we, think that. We yeah. go through the the mush too sometimes, you know, we go through those yeah. pieces of our Every life. Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally, <laughs> basically. We're shoveling snow, you know, no, it's, exactly. like, <laughs> it's no joke. And, you know, and there was like such a deep surrender to like the not knowing for a minute Mm -hmm. and also of allowing our friends to care for us. I mean, you have no idea how many friends were like, hey, come stay with us for a week. And we would. We we like for the first time in our life, we're like, yeah, maybe we should go stay with our friend, you know, our one of our wonderful friends, Kim in San Francisco. We stayed with her for two weeks. We stayed with amazing friend Brian in Pasadena for a week. Like we just... Mm -hmm. We, we literally were like homeless in a way and just kind of yeah. wandering, trying to figure out where the yeah. heck we're going. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's a weird one, right? Because it's yeah. like, and you know, I have to say like I, this whole experience and it did, don't get me twisted. I'm not trying to equate our little excursion of having more places to stay than anyone <laughs> as like being close to actually being homeless, right, like to right. the technical term of homeless. More displaced, I would more, say. Yeah. More like just yeah. more options than we're used to, you know <laughs> exactly. what I mean? And like, and some lack of clarity around what we wanted to do. Right, right. But it's really interesting, like the, what, I, what I think sort of drove some of the pressure of wanting to like bring that whole thing to an end is that it's really hard to produce. Right. It's like, it's really hard to get anything done when you're in that space. And, and, yep. and that like gave me a level of compassion for people who are homeless or displaced mm-hmm. or, you know, wh- where their, their, their personal situation is just some sort of not secure where now all of a sudden they're dealing with some of the base three of like Maslow's hierarchy right. on a daily basis. Like, where am I going to sleep? Where's my shelter situation? Yeah. Dude. Good luck coming totally. up with any good ideas or executing on any of those things. Oh right, when yeah. you when that's what you're worried about, totally. you know. Yeah, you're just in survival mode. Yeah, you're just yeah, like, absolutely. damn, you know. And I mean, and for us, that looked like, okay, well, let's see, we've got to, you know, we're we're done with this place for the week, so we've got to roll the RV up and we've got to drive, <laughs> you know, our freaking you know, massive class A RV with a heater and a queen size bed and a full size refrigerator, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, a yeah, hundred totally. miles to a different place and set up, but still yes. like that, that whole thing requires a tremendous amount of Ram and it's real hard It's to, true. to like get into a workflow and a focus when you're, when you're doing that. When you're you know? constantly on the move. Yeah. 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 And you know, I think it was so awesome because honestly, like this whole year just, 
it just shook, it shook everything loose again. And, you know, we haven't had that in a while. And I think it's important. I think it's important Mm -hmm. once in a while to just kind of like shake the rafters and see what's there and like, see what kind of tumbles out of the attic and see like, Oh, (laughs) do I need to, you know, do a little cleanup or maybe I need to revitalize some of these old pieces of myself. And I think for me in particular, one of the cool things about this time, you know, because I had such a trajectory of where we were headed in 2020 that when that didn't occur and there was truthfully nothing to be done about it, there's Mm -hmm. no changing it. It was just full surrender. Yeah. Like there's, there's no (laughs) manifesting, you know, uh, there's no creating my way out of what was real about 2020. And that gave me such an opportunity to turn into my beliefs and really like who I am in the world and what like the fabric of my being is. And it gave me an opportunity to revitalize some of my deep spiritual practices Mm -hmm. to bring back some of the amazing um, modalities that I'd kind of put away for a while. And, you know, I know some of you might've seen me talking about um, the Akashic readings I've been doing, you know, that just came out so strong again into my life. And I had started doing that maybe, I guess it was in 2008 or something when I took my psychic school, we learned about Akashic readings, but I kind of had put it away for a while and it just came storming out again, you know, demanding to be utilized, demanding to be shared again. And like, so many of these amazing things that I just didn't even have on my sites for 2020 came tumbling into reality with such great force. And Mm -hmm. it's been such a blessing to kind of almost remember who I am in the face of all of this and to really, you know, get an opportunity to like, walk the walk, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. this is what I teach. This is what I talk about in authentic self and in, you know, Instagram or wherever anyone will listen to me. (laughs) And it was time to really turn into it and practice it more deeply than maybe I'd had to, or been forced to in the, in the previous years, because a lot of things were kind of on autopilot. And so uh, there's so much gratitude because all of a sudden this like depth of my spiritual practice just you know, pushed out even further Mm -hmm. than it had. I signed up for my Kundalini teacher training, which is something I've had on my sites for years. Yeah, you've been trying to do this for a while. For years. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that came into play and that just came, you know, falling into my lap and just was a perfect timing for that. And it's so, it's like, you know, all of this to share that no matter what's going on, like there are always such opportunity and such amazing grace if you're willing to honor Mm -hmm. that and allow that into your heart space. And I just think that both of us had an opportunity to do that and see so many beautiful positives from, you know, from our friends embracing us and holding us and, you know, us getting to recognize that that, that was like sowing seeds that we'd planted over a lifetime of, you know, caring for people and loving people and being there for them in their, in their moment of need. And that just came back tenfold for us when we were sort of in our, like in our, in our shadow side of like, what the hell are we doing with our lives? (laughs) What's next? And it's just, it's really, really freaking beautiful to, to have an opportunity in 2020 just gave us this awesome opportunity to be like, wow, we're so held in the arms of, of spirit, of angels, of God, of our people. And it just, it was honestly just such a beautiful experience. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's interesting what you're saying about like, you know, the, the sort of pressure testing of your belief systems and and all of this stuff, you know, and it's, it's something like we laughed about a long time ago, reading this article about Gwyneth Paltrow's like breakfast or whatever. Right. <laughs> this was like the pre, pre goop lab stuff. I mean, this was a while ago. Yeah. And it was, a, I don't know if it was in like shape magazine or something, but it was like, this is what Gwyneth Paltrow does for, for breakfast, breakfast or yeah. whatever. And it's like an ostrich egg. Ostr- <laughs> well, no dude, it wasn't even an ostrich egg. It was like a egg of a blue Robin from the South of France harvested <laughs> right. by the, you know, and it's just like all of this really, you're like, this is impossible. Like, this is not stuff that people can just do on a daily basis. You right, know? right. And, and there's a tendency, I think, 
when when things are going well, right? And the, especially in LA, because it's just this is just how it goes in LA. You know what I mean? Like that breakfast in LA would be like, oh yeah, I mean, I could probably figure out how to do that, right? And anywhere else, you're like, what the fuck, dude? No. And there's like there's this real tendency to do this where you know everything is generally when things are good in LA, things are really good. Like mm-hmm. there's nothing that's hard about your life. The right. weather's perfect. You don't have to get up early. Like nothing, <laughs> like just, there's nothing challenging about your life when mm-hmm. you're, you know, doing well on the West side. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so it can be really easy to have these spiritual practices or these, these high performance habits or these, you know, you name it sort of, uh, practices, right. That, that just never get tested, mm-hmm. you know, cause you're like, Oh, this is what I do. And it works perfect. This is my morning routine. I do blah, 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 blah. blah. You're like, yeah, well, everything's perfect. You could do whatever you want. And right. like, and it's going to turn out the same way. But then when something happens where all of a sudden it's not perfect and everything actually is, is less than perfect on the outside and completely changed and everything is different. Now what, you know what I mean? Now, what do you do? Do you turn into those practices and do they work, Mm. you know, or do they fall apart because it's all just kind of like fluffy bullshit anyway? Right. Yeah. You know, and so that's one of the things about 2020 that's been really interesting, I think for, I mean, certainly for us. And I think for a lot of people, Mm -hmm. it's like these things that just kind of always worked, you know, and whether that's a business thing or or whatever, now they don't. Right. And so what what's going to happen? How are you going to adjust and adapt to that? And like, you know, who are you in the face of everything uh, yeah, of you know, not working anymore? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, totally. this, just this total adversity on like, on every level, you mm-hmm. know, that's the thing about 2020 that's been so bizarre is it's like, it's shaken up, you know, I mean, so I don't know, September 11th, you know, 2001, we get attacked quote unquote by terrorists, right? holy shit, that's the first thing that, that that's never happened in our lives, in our lifetime. You know what I mean? Like an attack on us soil. Wow. What a thing. But that was one part of life. Mm-hmm. You know, people mm-hmm. still went to work and, uh, you know, everybody had jobs. There was nobody, not, not an incredible amount of people right. were dying from a new type of, of, of virus floating around. You know, it's like, it's just completely different mm-hmm. when it's like you have somewhere to turn, And, you know, when you're like, oh, the tragedy of this incident was so crazy, but you can turn into your family, into everything around, because everything else is still there. You can go hang out with your friends and, Mm, you know, mourn together, right? Not with this whole pandemic situation. You lost your job. Your uncle is in the hospital and might die. You can't go see him. You can't see your family. You can't travel here. You can't, you can't find toilet paper. You know what I mean? (laughs) Right. All of this stuff is just like nowhere to hide. Yeah. You know, like Mm -hmm. from, from that perspective, no rock to stick your head under. It's like every single aspect of your life is getting turned over to some degree. And, you know, and that can either be, that that can inspire you to like shrink away and hide from it, or it can inspire you to turn into whatever practices you have in place around that aspect of your life and put it to work. Absolutely. And I mean, it like really the rubber, like the rubber meets the road this year, right? It's like who you are was turned up a hundred times. Right. And so if you are, you know, if you are fearful, if you are angry, if you are whatever you are this year got turned up a thousand, Mm a hundred times, a million times, like the great thing about that is you're actually getting an opportunity to clearly see who you are. Yeah. And if you don't like what you're seeing, this is the awakening. This is the moment to say, okay, I'm not activating in my highest self. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe these things I could have passed over before. Maybe I, yeah, maybe I drank a little too much wine, but now shit, I'm a bottle deep every single night. Like everything. (laughs) I don't even have to wear pants. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and it's, The beautiful thing about that is if you're willing to turn into that is that you're getting to really, truly see who you are. And Mm -hmm. that's for the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it is really here in your presence to go, okay, who do I want to be moving forward? Is this the patterning that I want to carry forward in my life? Or is this the opportunity to like let the walls come tumbling down and to recreate this this statue of myself in a meaningful way? And I think that that is 
the beauty and the blessing of 2020 if you're willing to allow that to be. Right. Yeah. To just take it and accept it. And I, you know, and I think that the hesitancy, if anyone's feeling that, if they're feeling that, you know, a fear of letting things completely come apart, you know, it, it's, it's likely a feeling like they don't really know how to put things back together, Mm -hmm. you know, and that, and that is uh, like, frankly, you know, that's a leap of faith, right? (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) If you're like, I don't really know what I need to do to put it back together. So I'm really afraid of letting the last little bits and pieces fall apart. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a, it's a real real thing. thing, but you know, this is like, there are real systems for dealing with this. You know I mean? Yeah. This is literally what we've been teaching you all for th- yeah. the past oh, close to a decade. Like there's ways of really embodying these lessons and really turning into it and, and, you know, discovering the beauty in it. And it's not as, um, you know, it's not as much a leap of faith as it is just really deciding, like, I'm going to actually start to learn the tools. I'm going to start to actually learn the things that create Mm -hmm. a, a system for me to navigate anything that comes at me. And that's what we want for you guys, you know, and you know, we're going through it too. Like we said, we're really having to dig into our toolboxes this year and really like use all of the shit that we talk about and all of the shit that we, you know, coach about because it really works. And on the flip side of it, you end up blossoming into an even more brilliant, beautiful, more expressed authentic version of yourself. And I think that Adam and I are probably doing this podcast because we're kind of coming into that next blossoming of self. We finally figured out where to go. And like, yeah. you know, the, the, the orientation of our life is coming back together, but it wasn't without, you know, that, that dark night of the soul, so to speak, mm-hmm. going through the shadow and, and getting through the stuff to really so, sort of ignite the next expression of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think there's something too, like, and what you're saying about learning these new, these new things, right? So there's an invitation here in the adversity of this year, you know, Mm -hmm. which is just an amplification, right? the, the, the thing is there are some people who 2020 is happened in 1995 for them, right? Like, you know, it's just the the thing about 2020 is that it's kind of everyone at once. Right. Right. But this is, Mm -hmm. people do this. People have a terrible year for one reason or another and then Mm -hmm. have to kind of rebuild everything. Right. And so it's a matter of, of putting this stuff into practice, I think, and taking action is the, is the part that, that for me has become even more clear. Right. And so like, and not, I'm just trying to add to what you were saying, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, cause what you said is like time to, to learn. The same thing. <laughs> well, what you're saying is yeah. it's time to learn these new right. tools. And yeah. what I'm saying is that it's, it's actually time to put this shit into practice. Mm-hmm. Like we don't mm-hmm. really have time to study and mm-hmm. learn and pontificate on what might be the, the best way forward for you or something that kind of feels good it's time to start picking paths and iterating and Mm -hmm. like interesting. Okay. I'm going to try it. Go. Didn't work. Next thing. Go Mm. next thing. Go. You know, we, we don't have in the, if that's, if there's anything that's become just incredibly clear for me is that this, this time situation, like there's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, um, by all measures of, of probability more than halfway done. Mm -hmm. with my life, Mm -hmm. you know? And when you start to break that out into weeks, right? You're like, how many weeks is that left? What did I do this last week? Mm -hmm. How much of this last week did I fuck off thinking about what I'm going to do? You know, and there's, there's not, not in a sense that you want to add stress, but there's, this is a finite experience here. And, and it's, uh, if there's shit that you want to do, you need to, you need to get it done, you know? And, and if there's things you're not sure about, try it. And if it didn't work, drop it off and forget about it. Be done with it, you know? And there's clear it out. Yeah. Clear it out. Mm -hmm. Like let this stuff, let this stuff go. Like Mm -hmm. how much shit are you carrying around that you could be sorted through and discarded or Mm -hmm. kept uh, with 10 minutes? Yeah. Like 10 minutes of active trying on something and be like, oh, okay, never mind. Fuck that. Yeah. Gonna, you know what I mean? And then I don't want to be a cupcake baker. I don't want to be a <laughs> cupcake suck. Like, this is a terrible idea. Yeah. Let it go and get rid of it because mm-hmm. the, the, there's this thing they talk about in, um, 
I mean, I'm sure it gets talked about in all of the sort of high performance circles, but like I'm uh, recently been kind of dapping back into some of the flow state stuff. And uh, Stephen Kotler talks about this idea of attention residue, mm, right? And yeah. like how when you're multitasking, which is a terrible, terrible idea on all fronts, when you task switch, when you go from one thing to the next, there's residue of the last thing that lingers mm -hmm. and, and comes with you. Right. And I think that, you know, and they're talking specifically about individual things that you're doing on a daily basis, like going through your checklist of stuff for the day. But I think that that, um, that concept holds true also for a lifetime. There's dreams, hopes, ideas, uh, hangups, right? Like mm -hmm. the uh, negative self-talk things, uh, an experience that you had once that made you feel dumb. There's all, there's these things that just carry over with mm -hmm. us, you know, and you might call it a baggage, right? So like on the, on the negative side, you might call it emotional baggage, but on the positive side, this is like dream baggage. Mm. This is stuff that's eating up Ram in yeah. your head that you're like, Oh, someday I will. Yeah. That, Yep. That takes energy. That takes energy that could be used focusing on the thing that you're actually doing. And so what do we need to do to just get through this shit? Mm -hmm. what, is this going to happen? Yes or no? Right, right now. Like, is this going to happen? Yes, it's going to happen. Okay, go. Boom. That didn't work. Okay, fuck it. That's out. You know, what's the next thing? And it's it's a whole shift in the way that that you have to think about things. And And to me, I always sort of fought that because it felt sort of frenetic, right? Mm -hmm. That you're just like, oh, this is like this, this squirrely thing where you're just like looking for the next thing to do to really nail this down. And, and I don't think it has to be that way. Like one of the things that, um, that I'm definitely taking into 2021 is this sort of revitalizing of a lot of the, the skills and which at this point, like, I don't even know if these are things that I learned or if this was just like who I am. Right. But like, <laughs> cause I did this stuff for so long, but like some of the skills and traits that I, I exhibited in the fire service of problem solving and stress management and taking action to like get shit done that I sort of left, you know, like when I left the job, I was like, ah, sweet. Don't have to deal with that stuff mm, anymore. Right. You know, and you in threw doing the baby so, out with the bathwater, yeah, so to speak. It, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in, in, and which was all fine. Coming uh, back to kind of the point that I was saying earlier, when everything's going well, you don't necessarily need that stuff, you know, and this was, a, I knew that, right. It's like, if you think about it, just like specifically from a, a day at the fire station perspective, if there's no calls to run and no emergency bullshit going on and, you know, your board meeting went well and none of your firemen were drunk on duty and like, <laughs> you know, it's like everything, everything went well, right? Yeah. No stress. You don't need any of those tools, any of the discipline, any of the accountability, any of the stuff that you have cultivated and just sitting waiting because ultimately in that job, you're waiting for something to go wrong. Like that's what the job is. And then you show up and you're like, ah, I know exactly what to do when this goes wrong. I've been <laughs> holding this idea in a pocket over here for, you know, for however many years, Yeah, <clears throat> you know? And so when everything in life and business and all of this stuff is going really well, you don't think that you need that stuff anymore. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and when I left the department and went full time into entrepreneurship, I left that whole bag of tricks because I was like, man, I don't need that shit anymore. Everything over here is running really smoothly, mm, you know, right. and, and that, you know, obviously 2020 changes the whole game and you're like, oh man, how do we, how do I come back from this stuff? And what do I even do? I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. And then you're like, wait a second, you got a whole bag full of tricks to deal with this exact stuff. Like the only difference is the context, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, yeah. this is not a literal fire, mm -hmm. you know, no one is dying here, but like you can definitely draw the correlations here between like <laughs> yeah, things that right. need to be handled right now and things that need to be planned for in the future and all of this kind of stuff. And so I think that's a, you know, a huge lesson for me in this, in this year is just, you know, uh, not compartmentalizing these aspects of your life and, and understanding that, you know, you, you it, it's all one thing, oh, totally. right? It's not, it's yeah. not this, well, this is what I, who I am and what I do when I'm at work. And this is what I am and what I do when I'm at home. And there's no correlation between the two. It's like, no, man, you, you, you have to integrate all of that stuff together, good, bad, and, and indifferent, because at some point you're going to need every aspect of, mm -hmm. of who you are and what your experience is in order to, 
you know, and to keep the the ball moving, you know? Yeah, this is like a perfect, I mean, I think this is a perfect, um, sort of segue into you just sharing a little bit about your men's coaching, because I feel like this is, well, I guess it's not men's coaching. It's yeah. I think it's going to end up it, being that way, it, but not yeah. because you did, you know, no girls allowed. That's, <laughs> that's not the case, but I do think that what I'm doing is probably going to attract more men than women. <laughs> yeah. And I think, uh, I mean, really, it's just super high performance, t- high level. Yeah. Like, you know, a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's different than anything you've ever offered or focused on. And it's been so cool to watch you turn into it because, like you said, you do have this whole lifetime of experience and tools mm-hmm. and real practical application for this type of scenario. Yeah. And seeing you actually activate it into this direction is so cool because you're so fired up about it. Yeah. You're like, oh, actually, this is like what I'm more qualified to do than anything else. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, ultimately, like this is the talking about that kind of compartmentalization things. Like I've always just kept my work identity separate. Right. You know, and I mean, we could go into like all of the reasons why that I think is easier to do sometimes, you know, but that's probably a different podcast, you know, but at the end of the day <laughs> there, you're, you're right. It's like, I have this entire <clears throat> this entire other life and persona and sort of identity that is, um, th- that, that frankly, no one has experienced, that you, you know, except yeah. for the guys that used to work for me. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, it never got and, in- integrated yeah, into, forward into, into the wellness. And, yeah. and a big piece of that was because I just didn't really see, I, I didn't see really the value because I, I, I think that there was, um, there were, there were a lot of things in that job that frustrated me that was like, God, man, all of this stuff, this rigmarole, all of these things that we have to go through, the sort of bureaucracy of all of this is really slowing down the progress that mm-hmm. I want to make, you know, mm-hmm. um, which was true. But like you said, again, even with just the personal side of it, it's like you kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater and you miss some of that stuff. And so the, the, the thing that I'm, that I'm doing is, is really taking people who, um, who want to optimize their performance mm-hmm. in the, in the, in the face of adversity, mm-hmm. real, realistically, right. like that's, that's what we're doing. And that's, you know, that, um, looks a little bit different for everyone, but we're, we're really leaving no stone unturned, so to speak. So we want to, we want to go through and run essentially, I mean, it's basically a health and wellness screening, right? Mm-hmm. So this is like, I mean, this is exactly what we used to do. Right. We take people and we run them through this process of elimination of, of sort of checking off all of the things that, that we need to get squared away from a health perspective to make sure there's nothing, nothing hiding under there that's going to be problematic down the road. Mm-hmm. Right. So regular ass health screening with some, with some tiered levels of deep dives into, um, individual biomarkers that, that show up. Right. So if you test at one level for some specific ratios of blood lipids, then that might, um, <clears throat> might trigger another level of testing. Mm-hmm. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so the, with the whole idea being that in order to be free to perform, you have to fully understand what aspects of your life need to get squared away because, there's it, just like that sort of idea and attention rev- residue stuff that goes on. There's, there's lingering concerns that eat up Ram as well, mm-hmm. you know? And so if you, if you went to your doctor three years ago, uh, for a routine checkup and you got a basic blood lipid panel and they said, Oh, wow, look at you, you got high cholesterol. And then you, and we're like, we're going to try to put you on medication, but you were like, ah, man, I don't really want to do the medication thing. Cause I've been following, you know, Rob Wolf forever. And here's the, you know, and so you, you ran this scenario in your head of why you're not going to, um, deal with that problem. And it's still there. For it's sure. still lingering. It's still something that, that in the back of your mind, every time you happen for whatever reason to come across a Lipitor commercial on TV, right. you're like, ah, oh, shit. Oh, shit. That thing's you in know? the closet it's back there. there. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and those things creep, you know, and, it, and so you want to get this stuff squared away mm-hmm. and get it all dialed. And so that's, that's the intent is to clear the plate of all of that stuff 
so that you can really start to focus on the things that are going to make you a better performer and, and really give you the, the clarity and confidence in what you're doing that you can, uh, and, and I mean, physically and health wise, mm -hmm. right? And like those two things, if you're very confident in your overall health, like right. from a biomarkers perspective, and then we start to develop the confidence in your physical ability that permeates into every other aspect of your life. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and I mean, you can all look around you and pinpoint that one person or five people or whatever in your life, hopefully more of them, than more of these people in your life, the better, right? Because right. this is just, just how it goes that you're like, man, the guy goes to the gym every day, you know, he's got this squared away, this squared away, never complains about his health. It's not like he's not one of these guys that shows up at the, at the Christmas party or whatever. And it's like, oh, well, you know, my knee and mm. uh, man, but I wouldn't do that, but my heart, and right. none of that shit's real for that person. Right. right. They're like, I'm crushing every aspect of my life. And they're living in a completely different reality. Yeah. Like, and this is the thing about this is that what you're offering people is to actually enter into a completely different stream of reality, yeah. a, a different thought stream, a different reality yeah. stream. And then, you know, all of this is energetics. When you are optimized in your physicality, then you are optimized in so many other ways. And then you are attracting more of that to your life. So, you know, it, to think that like your, your body and the health of it and the optimization of it is different or separate than the optimization of your entire life is mm -hmm. just, it's just not true. Like yeah. all, like you said, all of this stuff goes together. It all does. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and so when you, you know, and so as a lever, right. To like, I want to improve my life as a lever to do that. There's, uh, in my experience, there's nothing more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Predictably useful, right? There's nothing more consistent. There's nothing that, um, has a higher percentage of working than, physical fitness, mm -hmm. working on your fitness, because it's something that you can do immediately right. that changes neurochemistry, that changes everything. Right. You know, it's all it takes is to do, is to do something. And so there's this, you know, there's, there's obviously like the blood work side of this and all of this. And really my role in all of that is to sort of, uh, to almost work as a concierge or liaison with your medical professional, mm -hmm. you know, who, because obviously I'm not a doctor, but what I know is what questions to ask and what to do next and how, and where to take this. And, totally. and frankly, you know, this is a, this is one of the, some of the feedback that I've gotten in a bunch of the interviewing and stuff that I've done in building this program is that, oh yeah, sure. I went to my doctor and did this, but they extent, they gave me this stuff and it's like, doesn't really make sense to me. And I don't really have time to talk to them about it. I don't, I, right. like, it doesn't jive, but I don't, I don't have the time to research all of this. Stuff. Right. And I'm like, well, let's take a look at this. Oh yeah, no, this is this, this is this, ask them about this and ask them for this blood panel. Right. You know, and like that's move on. the move on. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's do this. You yeah. know? And so the same thing happens with lipids and the same thing happens with micronutrient status. The same thing happens with hormone panels, all of this stuff. Right. It's like, let this is what I'm here to do is yeah. sort of concierge slash slash liaise through this stuff. And then once there's a diagnosis or a, or a determination of a treatment plan or protocol, if any of that stuff comes up, then I'm there to show you exactly how to do it. How, to activate, how do yeah. we put this stuff in, you know, and, and fine tune and optimize and tweak. It's like, okay, well, if look, if what we're trying to do is get, you know, free testosterone up, then you need to stop running and start lifting weights while we do this. Right. right. And, you know, so there's like, yeah. it, it's just, it's 20 plus years of information about this stuff that is crystallized in my mind as like ways to, to solve these problems. And so it's about helping people do that, mm -hmm. bringing it, you know, if you're ready to do it, if you're ready to make these changes, uh, then I can make it go faster. Mm. You know, like yeah. that's the, that's the bottom line. The cool thing for me to, to watch you step into this is that like, you know, everyone who knows you, uh, all of your friends, family, anyone who gets a chance to get close enough to you to have a single conversation or like, you know, any kind of time with you is like, whoa, you really know what you're doing. You really yeah. know what you're talking about. And it's so exciting for me that people are going to experience that with you on such a deep level because, you know, what we've offered in and unveil your wellness and subsequently body mind experience and our other programs are literally snippets 
of yeah. what you have to offer. And this is the first time you've offered something in such great detail and such great um, capacity. Right. And I'm just like, the people who get the opportunity to go on this journey with you are going to be forever changed. Yeah. Like their reality is going to be completely different. Their physical, mental, and emotional reality is going to be completely different because they've navigated through some of the most, you know, densely, um, densely confusing aspects of their life, you know? Yeah. 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 And I think, you know, and this is just part of the journey, right. Of, of trying to, to help as many people as you can, right. Like unveil your wellness, body, mind experience, even body, mind roadmap, their general programs, Mm -hmm. you know, and they're really good general Uh, programs, but there's, there's a point where, you know, the generality, uh, may not work. Right. You know, and so yeah. then that's the time to take it to, if there's, to kind yeah. of the next level. You know? If there's like, anything we've learned over this journey is that your health yeah. is completely singular and your path is yeah. completely, you know, individual. And right. that's really, you know, it's funny because we've kind of gone from like, let's help everybody to like, no, actually let's help like people on a really high level. And yeah. I think that you're moving into that. And I feel like I'm definitely moving into that with the Akasha greetings and with, even with the energy that's going on in authentic self, it's like, it's helping people on a very deep level so that mm-hmm. they don't recognize who they were a year ago when they're done, you know, right. when they've completed that journey with you. Yeah. 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 And that's, um, yeah. And that's really the goal, you know, I mean, there's, yeah, that's, that's what's up. It, it, it makes us, it makes a lot more sense for us individually. You know, you yeah. can, you can dedicate more of yourself to a small group of people who are listening right? than you can to hundreds of people who are sometimes listening. Right. You right. Know, are kind like, of one foot in one foot out. Like, yeah. Okay. Or like have it more or less together, but yeah. are just here to pick up like a thing or two, you right. know, which is like, which is completely fine. And frankly, that was like the goal in the beginning was to just be like, Hey man, we want to create this community of people that are, that are like connected by these healthy habits and all of this stuff. And, yeah. and we did that and, and, and it's we, been, yeah, it's and been we, fantastic. Yeah. It's still there. It's you know, still it's, there. It's, it's still it's happening. Cruising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, at an individual level, it's, yeah, it's nice to, it's nice to be able to, to really kind of dive in on some stuff mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and for me personally, like I need that, I yeah. need that level of, um, usefulness. Mm, you know what I mean? Like totally. if that's something that like, if I was to identify my, uh, like an underlying purpose in life or like thing that makes me feel good, I don't know what, the, what that is. There's probably some self-help term for it. My Dharma. Yeah. Ooh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> My dharma is to uh, is to be useful. Yeah. Frankly, like mm. I, that's I like to feel useful, and I think that's a. I, I don't think that's unique to me. I mean, I think a lot of men, mm. um, and well, and women too, but I think men especially. There's a usefulness factor that, like, if you don't feel useful, it's really hard to come up with a purpose, mm, right? Totally. Um. Yeah. And that's the thing. I like to be useful and, yeah. and like useful to the fullest extent, you know, like I don't want to feel like, uh, you know, oh, I have so much more to add to this, but I can tell that you're not receptive to it. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's not, that sucks. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, I'm gonna give you just one little piece of the pie. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, fuck man, I know that that's step one of 40 and there's like a lot of ways that this could go wrong. Uh-huh. And and I'm like, I almost don't even want to tell you step one because you're not going <laughs> to listen to step two. And then they're going to be like, that guy told me step one, but now I over here, I am at step two and I don't know what to do. Right. You know? And so like, yeah. that's the shit that goes on in my mind. Yeah. Right. I'm like, no, I want full commitment of like, okay, look, here's what's up. This yeah. is going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot going on, but this is exactly how it's going to work. Right. You know, and at every step we're going to make the right decision. What, so I'm yeah. curious, like, what are the kinds of things? Cause I mean, you're going on this journey as well, like with, yeah. with your clients, like it's, it's something that you're enrolled in on yeah, a personal no, this is, level. Like I have to do this. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm curious, cause I think this would be helpful for people to sort of self-identify what are the kinds of outcomes, um, that you're expecting for yourself from this kind of work? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's a couple, so the, we'll start with the physical. Cause I think that's, that's the easy part. So the, um, clarity around, around generally accepted markers of health, 
right? So clean lipid panel, um, clean health screening, like skin cancer screenings, like, you know, I mean, that stuff's, it's a real deal. You know, mm -hmm. it's like the stuff you have to pay attention to, especially if you live in the sunny spots. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of people don't. Right. So it's about creating sort of this framework of like, the, honestly, I used to have this structure yeah. when I was in the department because of the fucking program I created. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Hey, guess what? Every year you have to do this stuff. Right, you know? right. <laughs> and it's, yeah, no, it's good. You got to get this stuff done, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's getting back on schedule with some of the more routine stuff around health. So mm -hmm. some lipid stuff, some uh, obviously the skin cancer things, just some general screenings, right, right? To get everything squared away. And then, uh, which, which just turns into, a, um, a sense of well being. Yeah. Right. Right. Where you're like, like, I've got okay, a clean bill of health. I've got a clean bill of mm -hmm. health, you know? And then if you, um, if you don't, if something in one of those screenings comes back negative, then what's the plan? Right. How do we, how do we solve this problem and then retest and clear that, that yeah. checkbox, you know what I mean? Hand deal with that dangling Chad. Right. You know, I, I, I just want to like insert a little story right here because this stuff is real, you know, like this, mm -hmm. this kind of like not dealing with your health or something kind of pinging up on your health screening, but not really knowing what to do about it. You know, some of you may have tuned into the fact that my dad went through a major health crisis, he literally died three times, um, and had to be brought back and, um, you know, was really touch and go for a few weeks there. Um, honestly, probably one of the most stressful events of this year, besides our dog dying. <laughs> uh, it's been a year. And, yeah. And the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but you know, this all occurred because my dad had, um, some stuff going on with his thyroid that he didn't deal with. And it right. literally caused some damage in his heart, which created this whole cascade of events where on his 65th birthday, he went into the hospital with this irregular heartbeat and mm -hmm. the whole cascade of events happened where, you know, he truly barely made it. And right. he's, you know, he's coming through on the other side of it and he's had, he's had months now of real health issues and real like touch and go scenarios. Yeah. And, you know, lucky for him, he's starting to turn the corner on it. But like this stuff, this is all from a thyroid screening that he got three years ago that showed some stuff that was on, you know, wasn't yeah. right. And he kind of just went, eh, whatever. Yeah. So like just to give the time is time. The time is you now. Have you, know? to, you have <laughs> to take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, there's really, I mean, the, so the, the thing about like the experience that I have with this stuff with the fire department is that, everything happens at a little bit younger age, right? So we, we know, you know, most people are going to die from cardiovascular disease or cancer in the fire department. That's true as well. It just happens younger, right? Like everything is just turned up, right? you know? So like the speed on everything, it happens a lot quicker. You age faster, all of the stuff, right? Cause you're not sleeping and you're breathing toxic shit all the time. And you're doing, you know, yeah. it's like, it's just a, it's like, <laughs> it's like living in the worst city ever with the worst <laughs> air quality and the loudest trains. And like, uh, right. you know, it's just, that's just what that life is. And so everything happens really quickly. And there's, I mean, I, I just can't even tell you uh, how many people I know of that this was before the health screening and all of this stuff started to happen. They would say, oh yeah, you know, I went to the doctor and they said this, but I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change anything, right. you know? And you're like, okay, okay, you know, and then a couple of years after retirement, they die, you yeah. know, or a couple of years before retirement, they die. Right? right. It's like, it just, you can't fuck around. Like yeah. once you get to a certain age, if you want to continue to live at all, and especially if you want to continue to like live a, you know, uh, like a high quality of life life, mm -hmm. you really just have to start squaring the stuff away, Yeah, you know? Totally. And, and it's not, this is not fear mongering, you yeah. know, this is just reality. Like it's, it's, it's gotta happen. And maybe you are like me, and you have some kind of genetic, just like tough guy gene that you can kind of do whatever you want and everything always looks the same. You know what I mean? Like my blood work from when I was, you know, before finding paleo and, and just generally eating like whatever the hell I wanted looks a lot like it does today. You know, I'm like, well, 
fine. I just got the genes for this one way or the other. You know, I'm like pretty squared away. Well, I mean, you've also been eating like pretty amazing for no, it's true. <laughs> the but 15 it's, years. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, totally. it all it all adds up, yeah. but it's like it's one of these things. Like there's definitely there's genetics, a genetic component for to sure. it. Yeah. Like you're more likely to die from cardiovascular disease than somebody else. And I'm on the low end of that spectrum. Right, right. right. But, you know, uh, doesn't mean that you are, you know, or, the, or yeah. the, you know, anybody out there is. And if you, you, you can't pour me it through that whole thing, you have to recognize and And this is one of the things I really like about what Dr. Rhonda Patrick talks about is she is like, I have this genetic variant. I think it's the ApoB3 variant or whatever that puts her at increased risk for, for Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. uh, early onset Alzheimer's. And she's like, I could cry about it. I could complain about it. I could shake my fist at God. I could do this, or I could get to work dealing with the the thing and doing the things that we know can counteract that. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what's up. It's like, right. you just have to be clear. Like, this is what's going on. There's no rose colored glasses. This is what's out there. It doesn't mean anything about me, but I have to deal with it if I want to, you know, continue to perform. So that's the idea, right? Is just to clear all of the stuff off, get that monkey off of your back and then really start to look at the things that point toward a high quality of life and longevity. So that's muscle mass, it's bone density, it's proprioceptive movement, right? It's, it's maintaining the youthfulness of your body. And the way to do that is to consistently train without getting injured. Mm. And that's, you know, that's it. That's the high level, right? right. So that's going to look a little bit different for everyone, but that's, that's what's up. And then of course there's the whole world of hormones and, and hormone replacement therapy and all of that. And I'm, I'm a fan, you know, I don't, you, you have to, um, and, you know, you, you have to understand the difference between hormone replacement therapy and anabolic steroid use and they're clearly different <laughs> things, you know, but, uh, I don't see any reason why this shouldn't be on the table for people. And it should be on the table as early as you, um, and your doctor kind of, uh, think it's what's up, you know I mean? And so I think my first sort of foray into this stuff was almost six years ago now, and it was too early. You know, the, the gap I tried for a year to kind of optimize some stuff, but the gap that I was trying to close between the levels that I had and sort of the hitting the supra physiological levels where you start to get like weird, you know, steroid type side effects, you know, yeah. it was too, the window was too small. It was too hard to hit. And, you know, so I gave, I stopped. I'm like, okay, this doesn't make sense now. But now, you know, it's, it's time to take a look again and mm -hmm. see what's going on. Because the reality is like better living through chemistry is a thing, right? you know, and if you can maintain your, your youthfulness and your ability to recover and the, the sort of suppleness of your connective tissue and your bone density and all of this stuff for longer and longer in life, why wouldn't you why do wouldn't that? You do it's that, accessible yeah. now. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's no, there's no like prize at the end of this thing for, you know, the martyrdom of, I was natural my whole life. Like <laughs> nobody's going to care, you know, <laughs> right, I mean, maybe, right. maybe for you, but like, it's going to make things easier, you right. know, a hundred percent. So, you know, and that's not to say that it's right for everyone, but it's a hundred percent worth looking into, right, like right. see what's up. And if it's not now, then let's create a, a roadmap for when you're going to check back again. Mm -hmm. and see, you know. So these are kind of physical goals, but yeah. you know, you and I both know after doing this for however long and also, yeah. you know, you and I've been really committed to our Kundalini yoga practice. Mm -hmm. We've been really committed to like doing some, um, spiritual practices daily yeah. and it's changed the frequency right. in our life. Yeah. Everything's so, yeah. yeah. So I'm curious, different. like with this side of it though, how you expect to see outcomes I guess in like a spiritual or more esoteric sense, or even if you just think of it from like, um, you know, an abundance perspective mm -hmm. or it, what, like, what do you see in that sort of yeah. side of your life Realm. that this will foray into? Yeah. So I think the big thing is, um, boy, all right, where do I start with this? I might, it's very clear in my mind. <laughs> Let's see if I can, <laughs> see if see I can, can articulate, if I can articulate it. it. So it's a, there's a, the, there's sort of these, these feedback mechanisms, right? Where confidence in, in what you're doing, uh, breeds 
like a better outcome, right? So if you're, if you're confident that you can, um, I'll take it back to the weight room for a second. Like if you go into it and you're like, I know that I can squat 300 pounds, very confident in it. When you go to squat 300 pounds, you're going to be a lot more aggressive and a lot more strong, a lot stronger. If you go into it like, man, I don't know if I can do it. When it gets hard and you get to the sticky spot, you're going to be like, yeah, I didn't think so. And you're going to bail out. Right. So there's this mechanism of, confidence leading to better performance and better performance leading to more confidence, right? This, this feed forward mechanism that I don't think hits a plateau. Like I'm pretty sure that that can keep growing as long as you have the ability to, mm. to like let that snowball build, you know, and continue to build. And you see it probably in people around you, people that accomplish stuff that you're like, I have, I wouldn't even know like where to start with that. And they're just like, Oh yeah, bam, got it. Boom. And they, blow right through it. And you're just like, what the hell, you know, that they've got a really big snowball, right. That's been like building for a long time. And so I think that, <clears throat> I think that, um, the way to get that ball rolling, the way to, to create, to create that snowball is to, is to generate space between your subconscious reaction to your environment, right. And your conscious decision about what to do in your environment. And that is meditation, right? That, that, that I don't know of anything else that creates that space better than meditation. And that's whatever that looks like for you, whether it's a full hour and a half set of Kundalini, or if it's, you know, a, a guided meditation or a silent mode, whatever, you got to find the thing that works for you to start to create that space. And then once that space is created, then it's about being intentional about the creation of that snowball, right? Like this is the thing that I need to start rolling forward. And I think that, so if we, and, and I think there's a lot of other ways of talking about it probably, but this is what's most clear to my mind is this sort of confidence success loop, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways to describe that, but it's the same loop. And so I think that what you need to do is find once that space is created, you find the one aspect of your life that you can easily develop confidence and success and performance, right? Something that is um, small enough that you can do it, but challenging enough that you, that it feels like you accomplished something, right? And that's, this is kind of that flow state trigger idea, right? It's like, it needs to be like 4% harder than you think you can manage and then you accomplish it. Right. Yeah. So, but what is this for you? Like it, instead of like, what is on the court for you instead of like the theoretical aspect of this, what are you specifically looking to gain from this practice, from this, this experience? Well, this is, this is where I'm going with okay. it. Right. Okay. So it's, it's this development of this, of the confidence and performance. Right. So as you, and then as that snowball develops, then you can point it at things in your life. And it's like, I can do this because I have success in this other realm. And so that's what I'm looking to, to develop is build that snowball a little bit bigger so that then I can start to point it at different aspects of my life. And what and aspects, it, like what, what is it specifically that you want to point it at? Cause no, I think it's important. Yeah, like, yeah, no, I'm just like, okay. that's what I'm, that's okay. where I'm going. <laughs> you just keep interrupting me. Well, it's so. just taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the big thing, the, the biggest thing for me is, is in business. Mm. You know, it's like, that's the most, to my, to me, that's the most pressing, um, success loop that I need to build, mm -hmm. you know, is generation of an idea, execution of that idea, success, build on the next thing. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, mm -hmm. that is the most pressing thing in, in life right now. The rest of it, the physical body, all of that is, that's the lever I'm going to pull to do it. Right. And so as physical fitness and all of that stuff is going to come along with it. The neuro, like the sort of neurochemistry that comes along with that is going to reinforce it all, mm -hmm. but it's all to the end of generating as much, as much wealth in a conscious and sort of morally aligned way mm -hmm. that I can. Yeah. And what does that mean to you? Because, you know, like, I think all of us think, 
oh yeah, we'd like to have more wealth or we'd like to have more abundance and, you know, or most of us, maybe it's those of you out there who are like, no, actually I've conquered that. I'm good good on that. But, but because I think there's so much more to what that means energetically, you Mm -hmm. know, money is just an energetic imprint and it's just an energetic output of who you believe you are in the world. So it's like, what does that create for you as a soul? Yeah. So I think what it is, is the, is the outcome, right? So the, the things that I, well, this is a, this is interesting that you're putting it this way. So <laughs> I'm really, I'm amazed at what I'm going to say right now. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is shocking. This is good. Okay. So here's, but here's, here's what it comes down to is I guess, um, it comes down to an identity, right? Mm-hmm. And so to me, the somebody who is who is successful in business and i and i mean yeah wealth and and monetary success is a big piece of that but there's also like something that comes along with being good at something mm-hmm. right and that's yeah. the, and and so like i can look back at what you know being a chief officer there's the so the outcome the wealth is being able to consistently handle emergencies, right? Mm. Like, oh, you call that guy, he shows up and solves the problem. Right. That's wealth. That's right. a wealth of, of mm-hmm. benefit, mm-hmm. right? But the identity and the skills and the required knowledge and the ability to execute on that knowledge is what creates that, right? It's not just that you show up and everything gets better. It's the years of experience and and sort of solid execution that you bring to the table in that moment that creates it. And so I think that for me, I'm excited about what it means to be like, who am I mm. when this outcome is successful? Right. Right. Like totally. what does that mean about me? That means right. that I've learned a whole new skill set of things or, or been able to aim old skills at new problems mm-hmm. in a way that that's satisfying to me. Yeah. And that is like, I'm useful again, Yeah, you know? And so like, that's what it means to me. And obviously, I mean, I want to be rich. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, yachts and shit are cool. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like that, but it's, it's, I think it's more about the, 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 the process, Mm -hmm. but then there's, there's an aspect of, and, and maybe I'll, maybe this will change over time and I'll find some other way that doesn't really look like financial abundance to get there. But right now in my mind, um, financial abundance really looks like a, the truest form of freedom that, mm-hmm. that I think exists right now. Right. You know, and, and I, I'm sure there's some quality, like there's, there's qualifiers around that, right? Like you could say, oh, well you could go and, you know, live in the middle of nowhere for nothing and be truly free. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. But I want an iPhone, I want a nice car and I want to be able to go on nice trips. And mm-hmm. I want to, I want to be able to spend, you know, time and, and provide awesome experiences with my friends and family and all of mm-hmm. this kind of stuff, which so far requires financial abundance. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like maybe something changes, but right now it's like, man, you need the money. Yeah. Like if you've got the money, then all of this stuff, uh, comes together, mm-hmm. you know? And, and, and to me, that's where, that's where like the happiness and the fulfillment and all of that stuff comes in is, is in being able to share the world that we have got to experience, mm-hmm. you know, with, with people who, haven't experienced it for one reason or another, whether they didn't feel like they had access or just didn't have the idea or whatever to be able to share that with people as a outgrowth of, of something that we did, Mm. you know, like we put this ball into motion and made this plan happen. And the outcome is that all of these people get to share in, in Mm -hmm. some level of abundance Mm -hmm. or experience. It's cool, you know? Yeah, I no, I, and I think it's really important because sometimes people get caught up in, like, you know, you can't see the forest through the trees kind of stuff. And it's mm-hmm. like what all of this stuff is going towards, like, you know, the work that you do, the work that I do, the work that Be The Wellness has really been founded on is that we want you to have access to the highest version of yourself, you know, and this is the kind of things like if, if there's an area of your life and financial is a big one because a lot of people have not quite optimized and aligned with that to the point where they actually are experiencing the kind of wealth or at least the experiences of wealth that they want in their lives. That is just an indication that the rest of this stuff isn't shored up. It's just an indication that like the energetic imprint of who you are in the world hasn't been activated right. in, in the complete way that it could be. And that can come f- 
truly from optimizing your body, from optimizing your health and understanding that all of these things work together. When you are optimized, you create that energetic outgrowth Mm -hmm. in all areas of your life. And so if the way to get to it is through your physical being, then this is, this is the offer. This is what you're creating for people. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that there's, there are outgrowths of, of this sort of stuff that, um, like I said, in the, when we first started talking about this, that permeate a lot of different levels of your life and, you know, and and it can look like the, the confidence or even the wherewithal to some degree to level up in some aspect of your life, you know? And, and I think that unless you've experienced it, you know, and this is, this is something that 2020 really like brought around for me. It was like the first time in my life that I have felt completely disempowered, you know, where there was like no real aspect of my life that I had much control over, you know, and that really for the first time that that showed up, like normally, you know, even if things were financially rough or we were, we were going through a rough patch in our relationship or whatever, like I'd go to work and I was in charge and that's what's up. Like, this is, nope, I'm the guy. This is, uh, everybody has to do what I say. You know what I mean? And that's, that's how it goes. Right. And then you come home and you're like, Oh God, this is terrible. I'm not in charge anymore. And like, there's no, this is rough, you know, but, but then you always had that piece that where you're like, you have the, you're, you're getting to continue the, the control over your life aspect. Right. Mm-hmm. And so Robert Sapolsky talks about this with, um, you know, it, at, at length in the the book, why zebras don't get ulcers, but he, you know, where he's talking about the baboons and how what a bunch of assholes baboons are <laughs> and that, you know, the, the most stressed out baboon is the one who has the least amount of control over his life, you know? And, and that's like the beta baboon, right? Mm-hmm. The male beta baboon is the most stressed out primate on earth mm-hmm. because he never knows he's always getting picked on. He never gets to, you know, his pick of the the women. He's always getting chased out of the crowd. He has no control, but he's reliant on the troop for existence. So he has to stay there, but he has no ability to dictate any aspect of his life. That's like the most stressful environment for a primate to live in. And like, that's what it felt like to some degree in 2020. There were aspects of this where I was like, shit, I can't leave. There's nowhere else to go. There's no new troop that I can go join. That's going to be better. We're all just stuck. I, nothing that I'm doing is working. There's everything that I put out is like falls flat or just, you're like, you're yelling them down a hallway. You know what I mean? There's just nothing that's working. And that was like a, that sucked, man. And it like really drove me into, I think, uh, like a state of depression. I mean, I've never been depressed, quote unquote, you know, but like you read about the symptoms and stuff, you know, <laughs> you're like, shit, man, I think I might be depressed. Like this is a really terrible, um, place to, to, to be. And, you know, what I really realized is that like the, the things that I was looking for and have always sort of looked for in, um, to, to, to sort of scratch that itch, you know, that have all been external, mm-hmm. right? So it's been, I, I go to work and exert my authority that mm. was bestowed upon me through, right. you know, some gold bugles on my collar or whatever, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, or your, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's some sort of, of power that you're exerting on the external world that gives you that sense of empowerment, right? And, and what I really grasped uh, very clearly in this year is that, that's, that that well can dry up, right? That's not a consistent source of, of, um, of power for yourself, you know? And I don't mean power in the sense of like megalomania power, but energy. like energy. Energy mm-hmm. of like sense of self and who, who you are and, and, uh, who you get to be and impact and presence and projection of power in this world has to come from within. And that I think can be cultivated, um, that it, and I think it has to be cultivated. Like, I, I think you have to recognize that the external powers will wane, uh, before you recognize how important it is to have that internal power, you know, and that, 
to, to me, that internal power comes through discipline. It comes through a little bit of suffering probably, you know, and this is where I think that a large part of this coaching ends up being a little more masculine and the men are going to identify with it more because I've just seen it over and over and over. You get a bunch of dudes together and you do some really hard shit and they come out of it like brand new people, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's something in, um, the male psyche, uh, you know, and, and, or the masculine, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, fuck, I don't know, dude. I don't know how to talk about this stuff without like I potentially know. offending just, people. To just talk so it's about like, it. dude, yeah. the, 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 but the reality is like the alpha male presence is forged in adversity and, um, like locker room bullshit, mm-hmm. you know, like that's mm-hmm. where it comes from a dark and fucked up sense of humor, really, really hard stuff, a group of peers and people who, you've probably suffered with to some degree and have seen who they are in the face of adversity. And that creates something that's Mm -hmm. I think really important and missing for a lot of guys, Yeah, you know? And so I think that if you can, if you can create some tools and some practices around cultivating that, then things start to change, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you, you know, there'll be, uh, and we, man, fuck man, you see this, like we used to call it badge heavy, right? So when guys would get first promoted, it's like their first real boost of testosterone. And like, now I'm one of the alphas when the end of the other alphas are around, right? And Mm -hmm. I've got this badge and I'm in charge and they do stupid shit and they're, they're not humble about it and they make a bunch of mistakes and then they learn from it and then they become a solid, humble leader, Mm, you know? And mm -hmm. so you have to go through that whole process. I don't think there's any way to, you know, to curtail that. So you need a group that, um, of of varying degrees of, of badassery that can beat you down Mm. when you need it and Mm -hmm. hold you up when, when you need that. Yeah. And that's, um, yeah. And I mean, and that's something that's really like, I got that firmly in my last job and, downplayed it, I think, because I didn't understand how important it was until it's gone, Mm. you know? And now I'm like, yeah, shit, I need to recreate that. (laughs) You know, so a big piece of this, of what I'm trying to do for me is recreating that aspect of my life where I have these people who depend on me and I depend on them. And it's this cohesive cohort of people who make each other better, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's, um, that's how I feel useful. Yeah. Right. Awesome. I love it. I think it's awesome. I'm so excited for the people who join and, you know, I would just say that if there's women out there that are like, Oh, this seems really masculine, you know, this all applies to women as well. And it's why you see so many women in CrossFit. You see so many women doing hard things as well, because it does, um, it does create some of this stuff and, and women are different. I think they can swing either feminine or masculine. So it just depends on like which thing activates you, yeah. you know, it's like, does a sound bath activate you into becoming this, your highest self or does like doing something hard and realizing you're stronger than you ever thought you yeah. were like, there's, I think women have a, a, a bit of flexibility with that or, or a lot of flexibility with that. And I think I'm actually a good example of that. Yeah, you know, it's totally. like, um, give me the sound bath and I'm going to do this shit with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like do it all, yeah. you know, do whatever speaks to you. But you know, this is just an opportunity I think for people to just take the reins on their lives, you know, in 2021, yeah. if there's anything we learned in 2020, it's that, you know, again, those pieces of ourselves that maybe we're not that stoked about, were turned all the way up mm-hmm. and, this is an opportunity to get right with that stuff and to, to activate in those areas of your, of your life that you want to, you want to create a different energetic output in the world and see yourself differently in the world. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, dude, I've worked with some gnarly chicks, you know, (laughs) I mean, there's just like (laughs) impressive levels of, um, of everything, frankly, like stamina and fortitude and just handling it, you know? Yeah. So I feel like we should just, um, wrap this up by just giving folks a little, um, bookend on where we are Yeah, and, um, you know, we're, I don't know how it came about <laughs> except for somehow out of the ether, drop down the little thought bubble to Adam and I, that we should move to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, you know, our company's a Wyoming corporation. So there was just kind of this thing around Wyoming. We drove through here on our way back from Montana. We stopped for one night. So yeah. literally we had been here for one night Yeah. when we decided that it would be ago, a good yeah. idea <laughs> to move here. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I've, I've had Wyoming on my yeah. list since yes. I was a little kid, yeah. you know, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the cowboy state, you know, and they've got a sweet saddle bronc rider on their license on, plate. They do have the coolest license. Yeah, Besides Hawaii, know? I mean, the rainbow. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. I mean, when I was young and cowboying and rodeo and listening to Chris Ledoux songs and he was singing about Wyoming and all of the stuff. Right. And so it's like, it always has just had this. Yeah. This thing. I did not so always have this thing. So yeah. <laughs> it's quite surprising to me when the thought yeah. bubble occurred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, frankly, I never, I mean, I, I surrendered the idea of ever moving to Wyoming, like about a month after we started dating. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> or no, actually, you know what it was when we were driving up to the top of Haleakala in the back of a truck and it was like 50 degrees and then Vanessa was melting down because of how cold it was. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, okay, cold. this isn't going to work out. Well, you know, it just goes to show that there's always room for change. There's no matter who you are in the world, there's always room for a completely different reality to occur. Yeah. And I think it's like a, a completely different reality for me that this would be something I would resonate with. And somehow I think because I've always been an ocean girl, I've always been a sunshine girl. I've really avoided the cold. I've avoided mm -hmm. sort of this whole reality that exists on planet earth. And I think there's something really powerful to turn into what you avoid and to learn from it. And I think that, you know, it started like a year ago when I started taking, you know, turning my shower from steaming hot to like, a little less hot. Right. <laughs> and then the next day, like a little less hot, but then back to hot, then a little less hot, yeah, back yeah. to hot. And over the year, you know, I finally ended my showers like on cold and I was learning from the cold. The cold mm -hmm. was teaching me something. The element of cold was yeah. teaching me about myself. Yeah. Wim Hof's not wrong. No, he's not wrong, yeah. you know, obviously. And, and there was just something about the idea of coming here. Where I was like, you know, I probably like a year ago would have just never even entertained the thought, but there was something about this journey looking into cold, looking into like what was there to be learned that I was like, no, I could learn something from this, mm -hmm. this experience. And there's something calling me too. And probably it's, you know, a manifestation of your soul's journey and mine colliding and yeah. me being like, all right, I'm down with your soul's journey for a while. <laughs> something, yeah, something, something crossed the line. And then, you know, but here we are today, it's 10 degrees, we got like six inches of fresh powder and baby blue skies yeah. and the sun's out. And sun. It's you know? beautiful. It's, it's it's really stunning. And I'm my soul is being activated in a new way of just looking at this environment and understanding what's here and how to be with it. That is a really powerful transformation for me. And I'm like, you know, in the end, again, it's all about turning into these things that can make us more expansive human beings. And being in this environment was, one, I mean, we we moved here in December, like yeah. in the middle of the cold. <laughs> it wasn't even like, let's ease into it. It was like, no, no we're going all the way let's in. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's a whole saga about getting here, which we'll probably have to do in like a in between episode <laughs> or something. But, but being here, um, it feels like the first real accomplishment of 2020, 2020. <laughs> like the thing that we got done, we actually yeah. accomplished moving here. <laughs> well, and you Which know, it goes to speak, it speaks to alignment, right? Because we really didn't have a spot right. where we were aligned with, where we were like activated on. And as soon as we both aligned and we soon, we got activated, the world opened up for this to occur. And it's like, you know, within a couple of weeks, we had to buy a new car. We have a, a new house we're moving into a really awesome, amazing place that we're so excited to share with you guys. Um, that'll be coming soon. And it just kind of all activated because yeah. the alignment was there. But before the alignment could occur, just everything was wishy-washy. Super wishy-washy. Yeah, <laughs> yep. it was like two, like a month and a half of wishy-washy and then one week of, of solid alignment to accomplish what wouldn't take most people a month. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> it's just like, and um, go. go. <laughs> you know, we, and, and so we're here. Yeah. So yeah. we're so excited. Um you know, there's just something about pulling a geographic, as Connor yeah. Connor Moore would say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just got to shift it up. Yeah. So we're so excited to catch up with you guys and just kind of get back on the same page. 
We are moving into our new place January 1st. So mm-hmm. literally the start of 2021 for us feels like a brand new beginning. And we are so activated and excited about what 2021 is bringing, particularly our B-Fest event in May. Mm-hmm. Um, it just feels so aligned and so exciting. And like, I literally can just see the sun shining on all of us, all of us coming together for this moment coming out of 2020 and kind of like coming back into the community, coming back into the fold and feeling the grace and love of all that we've created in this community and finally getting to experience it in person. So we're so excited for all of you that have signed up already looking forward to those of you who are going to sign up. Um, you know, we just really invite our community to show up for this. Yeah. And it's not, it's not a small ask. It's a big ask. It's, it's an ask from our hearts that you guys show up for be the wellness because we've been through so much in this last year. And we just, there's a, there's a real ask from our soul that our community comes to that event and that we show up together as a united experience again. Yeah. There's something about that that is so meaningful to us. Um, as the stewards of Be The Wellness, that we really, it's not just about, you know, oh, great. Do you want to go to Zion? And do you want to do all these awesome things? There's a deep ask from our souls that like our community shows up for it. And it's not something we do ever. We don't actually ever really make that call, but it's, it's a meaningful ask for us. So if you're thinking about it, you're on the fence, just know it really means a lot to Adam and I specifically like in this moment of our lives in this moment of this transition that you show up yeah and it'll mean a lot like the 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 entire community yes you know is we're just due for a healing exactly. for lack of a better you know term exactly you know? and it's um if we just show up it'll happen it, it's the magic is there and it's waiting for us. And there is such a divine bubble around that experience Mm -hmm. that is waiting to be held by, by us and by you. And so, yeah, we just really, you know, we ask that you, you find the space in your life, you find the finances, you find the energetic imprint to be there because it's just, it's so important to us. Mm -hmm. And we know that it will be so important to you too. Bam. Yeah. So thank you for being with us. We love you. We appreciate you. We honor you and we support you in your highest expression of humaning and beyond. (laughs) (laughs) Of all of the things. Bye. Bye.